Hey everybody, and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields. Today, we're talking fruit, and specifically how to prep that fruit for a sour. So over here, I have a sour that I just did the first process yesterday. It's been souring overnight. If you haven't seen the video on how I do my kettle sours, I'll post a couple of those videos in the link description below um, on how the two-day process works. Essentially, you're doing your mash, on the first day and you're allowing it to sour overnight using uh, lactobacillic planetarium which is going to be in a good belly probiotic drink that we use that we use to sour overnight so this went from about four and a half ph with a little bit of lactic acid when we first got done with our mash yesterday and we've added our good belly in here it's dropped within about 24 hours or so to three and a half ph and we're ready to start the second day but before I do that, I'm going to prep my fruit uh, for what's going to happen after primary fer fermentation gets done. And so in this case, I like to use seasonal fruits. Um, uh, it is fall time and it's almost November-ish, which means, you know, Thanksgiving and specifically cranberries. So I have a whole bunch of cranberries that we're going to be using today. I'm going to show you how I prep those in order to put them in the secondary once this gets done with the primary fermentation. So hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a drink, and cheers. All right, so let me talk about what we're gonna need. So of course, you're gonna need your fruit. In this case, we're using cranberries. I'm also gonna be adding ginger, so we're gonna do a cranberry ginger sour. The ginger I add a couple of days later. I usually add about two ounces, or excuse me, five ounces for two days. Um, and so I'll add the cranberries in for a week, but the last two days I will put in the ginger. If you leave ginger in too long, it, uh, it can get really gingery very, very quickly and it even can get like a, that hot ginger burn. So I'm not going for that. I just want that ginger on the back end of this uh, cranberry ginger sour. And so I add about five ounces for two days. And what I do is I take my ginger root, I soak it in some sanitizer for just a couple of seconds, let that uh, kind of drip dry off. I actually slice it uh, very, very thin, and then I put it in a small paint strainer bag and I throw that in my secondary when we get to that point. But today we're talking fruit. And so what, I, what you'll need is a big bowl like this one. I use a five gallon paint strainer bag like this. I'm gonna put this in some sanitizer. I've already sanitized this bowl. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cranberries in here. I'm gonna put some sanitizer right in this bowl, just kind of dunk them in there, get every, you know, it helps rinse them off and it helps get the some sanitary or sanitizer on the cranberries to sanitize them a little bit. And then we're gonna put them in the freezer. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first what I like to do is I take my paint strainer bag just like this one and I'm gonna stretch it all the way over the outside of the bowl. This has an elastic band on it, so it kind of helps keep on the outside of the bowl so uh, we keep the cranberries in. The reason I do this first is because then, when after we get done freezing it, I can just open this paint strainer bag up a little bit, mash these up right in a bowl like this one with a, with a potato masher, help break open those things, and it's all within this mesh uh, paint strainer bag, which eventually I'm gonna put in my big mouth bubbler like this one here, uh, and put the whole uh, works right inside of one to uh, add to my secondary. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I've got about seven bags of cranberries here. This is gonna equal about a uh, little under six pounds of cranberries for a five gallon batch. So five and a quarter. I like to do about a pound per gallon when I'm doing fruit. This will be very fruity and uh, a great, great winter beer. The guests that I have over for Thanksgiving or Christmas, depending on what time of the year that I do this, um, absolutely love this, this uh, sour. It's a real uh, crowd pleaser. All right, so now that we got our, all of our cranberries in here, although full, I'm gonna go ahead and dump what's you know, what can fit in here anyway for sanitizer. We're really not looking to soak it. We're really just kind of looking to coat it, you know, quick kill any and rinse any uh, germs that might be on this. And then we're gonna freeze it, which is gonna help kill some bacteria or anything growing on these things anyway. But it's kind of a twofold, um, you know, hit it once with sanitizer and then we're gonna go ahead and freeze it. So I'm gonna fill kind of the void in this bucket or in this bowl with sanitizer quick. almost all the way up to the top. And then what I'm gonna do is take my paint strainer bag and kind of tie it off. Not so tight that I can't get it back open because we are gonna need to, whoop, lost a couple more. 
And that's why I buy five, a little over five pounds, because you're gonna lose a couple cranberries along the way. So then we're gonna go ahead and tie this off just gently, just so I can reopen it after we get done freezing it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of roll these things in here to kind of help rinse and coat every cranberry with some sanitizer. Again, we're not looking to soak this thing like crazy. We're just looking to get it wet for a few seconds here, you know, a minute or so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of just kind of grocery bags like you'd get at you know, Walmart or Target or whatever. And then take a couple of these grocery bags. I'm gonna put this thing after I let it drip a little bit. Again, you don't wanna let it soak too long because you want all the cranberry juice and stuff that's in these things. Try not to break them up too much. Uh, you know, in here, because you're gonna want that juice eventually in your beer. So we're gonna go ahead and carefully put these things in a bag. And I'm gonna tie this up, and then I'm gonna do the a second one just for good measure. And then we're gonna throw this whole thing in the freezer. All right, now that we have our cranberries all nicely packaged up, we're gonna throw those in the freezer. They don't need to be in there for any, you know, specified amount of time, but this is probably gonna last about a week. That's what our primary fermentation is probably gonna take. So we're gonna have these things sitting in the freezer and it's gonna do a couple of things. Not only is it gonna kill all the nasties and bacteria and germs and stuff that are on the cranberries anyway, since they're fresh, it's also gonna help break down the skin on the outside of the cranberries. On the package, it actually says, don't rinse them if you're gonna freeze them first, just freeze them right away. Well, that's because rinsing them like that will help break down that casing. Well, we want that to happen. We want them to kind of get mushy a little bit because then when we use that potato masher, when I open this thing back up and let them thaw, I'm gonna use a potato masher, mash them up, break open all those skins. That's gonna let all that cranberry juice come out and get inside of our beer. And so uh, if you haven't, again, watched that kettle sour on how to do that, I kind of go through step by step. I think in the example uh, that I have in the link description, I'm gonna be putting the one I used blackberries. That's another really good one that I do over the summer where I use fresh blackberries from a local farm here. Um, but I keep this recipe for my kettle sour the exact same. The only thing I really change is the fruit additions that I put in it. So I'll have that uh, recipe also in that uh, same video. So go ahead and check those out. But after we get this put in there, we're gonna go ahead, mash those up, put them in a secondary, and then rack our, our fermented beer right on the top, let it sit for a week in our secondary. So if you have questions about how to do this process, about uh, you know freezing and, and thawing and, and putting fruit in a secondary, I have a different, more in-depth video about adding adjuncts to a secondary. I'll also put that in the link description below. But again, you feel free to put comments or questions in the video description. I am happy to help out. That's what this channel is all about. So with that, grab yourself a beer and cheers.